We left off with a stickman and a box with an exit, and we're going to be working mostly in C++ with Visual Studio today. So make sure you know where your project root is and your C++ bindings, and then start up Visual Studio. And make a new project. And I'm going to be using Explorer to show you where the folders are, it's just so that it's bigger. Uh, feel free to use Browse. So go to your folder that you want the source in, and then I'm going to call it Maze CPP and Empty Project. And let's get started. So first, I'm going to change it to 64-bit compilation, and then I'm going to go to Project Properties and make sure I'm on all platforms and all configurations. And then our target name is going to be lib project name dash platform dash configuration. And our output directory, we want to be in the Godot directory where our Godot project is going to be. And we want it to be a DLL. And then VC++ directories, we want the include directories. We need to go to the C++ bindings, the Godot headers folder. And then we also need the include folder. And then also the include gen folder. And then we want a library directory. And that will be our bin folder in the C++ bindings. And then in linker input, we want to add the library that we need, which is our Godot bindings that we built. So libgodotcpp dot Windows dot platform dot configuration and then dot lib. And so you'll see that what it's named there in evaluated value. So make sure your files are named that way. You want x64 instead of win32 for 64 bit. And then we are done with the project properties. So let's start adding some files. We need a player. And we need a root. And we also need a Godot library where we're going to make sure that Godot knows how to use stuff. And then we need header files for the player and root, but not Godot library. And then I'm going to rearrange this a little bit so that the C++ and headers are next to each other. And in player.h, let's pound include, we want core Godot. And then we want kinematic body 2D because that is what we are in our player. And we want input because we're going to handle some input in this. And then we are namespace Godot. Class player is a public kinematic body 2D. And then we need to use this Godot class macro. Player is our name and kinematic body 2D is our type. And then we want a private vector to motion. And then the rest will be public. A const int speed, we'll set it to 300. And static void underscore register methods and void underscore init. Both of these are required for all of the files that you're going to make in C++. And then we want void underscore process float delta or player because we're going to handle some stuff in process. And then constructor, destructor, and void update motion from input. And then player CPP, we want to include our header and using namespace Godot. And we want to do our register methods function 
inside of it, register method, char star process. That is what Godot sees it as, and then a pointer to the process function. And void init, we don't need anything in it, but we need an init, otherwise it doesn't work anymore in 3.1. And then we need a constructor and destructor. In our constructor, we want to set motion to zero. And then destructor, we don't need anything. For player process, the this is the underscore process function in Godot. It gets called every frame. We want update motion from input and move and slide motion. And then in our update motion from input function, we want motion equals vector to zero zero. Just make sure that it's always zero when we're starting this. And then we are going to set the input. Uh, we're going to get a input pointer from input get singleton. And then if input is action pressed UI up, then we know we're going up. And so we want our motion Y to be minus our speed because up is negative in most game development, actually. And then for UI down, we want to increase speed on the Y axis. And then for left, we want X to be minus speed. And for right, we want X to be plus speed. And then make sure these are all just ifs and no else's because if you are holding two keys, they'll cancel each other out and such. Build it, make sure it builds, and we're good. So let's work on our Godot library. We need to include the player header, and then we can use namespace Godot now in 3.1. So let's do our extern C void. GDN export Godot GD native init. And all we are doing is calling the Godot GD native init. You need these functions declared every time. It's the requirements for uh, native script. So then we also need extern C void GDN export Godot GD native terminate. And we are again just passing it on to the Godot GD native terminate function. And then we have our Godot native script in it. And in the native script in it, we're actually going to register things. So we are going to call the Godot native script in it and pass on the handle. And then we are going to start registering our things. Right now, we just have a player class. So register class player. And that's it. It's not building because I have an unresolved external. So I made a typo somewhere. Ah, I did not put player colon colon in front of it. Now, hopefully it works. It does. All right. And then let's go to Godot and make sure that this actually works. So let's, we need to make a GD native library. So, and then down in the bottom here, we are going to Windows 64-bit and selecting our library and then saving this as whatever you want to call it, but I'll call it Maze CPP debug because we're on the debug one and GDN lib you want for your extension. 
And then in player, we're going to attach a script, native script, and the class name is gonna be player. And then we need to go over here and where it says library, it's empty all the time. So you need to drag over the GDN lib file over to that library thing to make it work. And then we have motion on our player. There's a couple issues here, but we do have motion. So we need the background to be bigger. So I'm just gonna double it. So we'll make it 38, 40, 21, 60 for size. And then we'll just set it to minus 1920 by 1080 for the position. And then in project settings, we want to fix our input so that we can use WASD. So for left, I am adding key A, and then right is key D, and up is key W, and down is key S. And that's all you need to do. And now we can move it with WASD. And there we go. And the background looks correct. Let's end this video here.